multiple PBA titles on the line in Detroit at the 10th edition of the sport's ultimate test, the PBA World Series of Bowling. Night two of five consecutive evenings of competition featuring pros from around the globe, among them the PBA's best. Tonight, it's the Chameleon Championship featuring that man, the two-handed wonder from down under, Jason Belmonte. Could he win three titles here at this year's World Series of Bowling? Yeah! We're moving fast down 95 here in the Motor City as we welcome you inside the legendary Thunderbolt lanes here in Allen Park, Michigan. Last night here in the arena, it was the veteran, Dick Allen, punctuating the resurrection of his career as he joined Norm Duke in becoming the only multiple winner on this year's PBA Tour. Those two could be joined by another tonight. So Dick Allen wins our first World Series of Bowling event. Tonight it's the Chameleon Championship. Tomorrow 8 Eastern it's the Scorpion and then the third major of the season, the PBA World Championship. Friday night it's USA versus the World. Our foursome for tonight's World Series of Bowling show includes the Colombian Andres Gomez in a good mood right there. The youngster AJ Chapman looking forward to seeing his game. Ronnie Russell is back on television. So too is this generation's best player Jason Belmonte. Already, this will be the sixth TV show for Jason Belmonte this campaign. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson, back here with you. Thursday night in primetime, Jason Belmonte guns for history as he tries to win again his 11th major that would be most in PBA history. And Randy, right now he's in the midst of one of those seasons that could absolutely cement his legacy. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, he told us uh, a couple of weeks ago that this is the best bowling he's ever done on the PBA Tour. I mean, think about the history that he's already accomplished. Number one in earnings on the tour, number one in average, and here he is tying the late great Earl Anthony and Pete Weber with his 10th major title. He went on to lead three consecutive tournaments in a row. Here he finishes second to Simonson, only because of two of those what could have been, and then the very next week leads and loses to Norm Duke. It's the best bowling I've ever seen him do out here, and I'll, I'll tell you what, he's got a stronghold on Player of the Year race, and this is the guy to beat each and every week on the PBA Tour. He's already been Player of the Year four times, quickly closing in on a fifth. He's standing by with Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, guys. So, Jason, you are poised to have a really great World Series again this year. They just talked about it. You made this show. You have a chance to make it Scorpion tomorrow, and you're already set for Thursday and Friday show. So talk to me about the impact that the World Series could have on a player's season. Yeah, well, there's so many events in one location within you know a few week stretch. So if you have a great World Series, it can really make or break your season. Uh, it's one of the best events that we play. Players from all over the world get to come uh, to the World Series. It's grueling, though. I mean, we play for 10 hours a day for a couple of weeks. That's madness. But uh, if you're in a good rhythm, you can really set, uh, set the pins on fire and have a great season with the World Series. Now, you've made a lot of World Series shows in the past, but you've never been on the format that you're doing tonight. So how do you plan to attack it with no seating whatsoever. You guys get a fresh start right now. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's very unique. Um, I like the idea of having um, essentially a, a bowler for the, the seeds. You get to warm up, get loose on the pair, experience the atmosphere, and, you know, let your heart rate come down a little bit. So hopefully, uh, you know, I, I set up a good seeding match and give myself a good chance to win this one. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers. Best of luck you and the Thanks. other guys. All right, Kimberly, thank you. Take a look at how this one shapes up. 134 to get down to our final four. 17 different countries represented. 10 games of qualifying to get to that cut to 16. Today we had the round of 16 and then the round of eight. Highlights from the round of eight coming up in a moment. We're down to our top four right now here live on FS1. Russell Chapman, Gomez, and Belmonte. That's how they advance to the TV finals. You see Ronnie Russell listed as number one. Uh, those numbers right there to the left of you, they're out the books right yeah. now, Randy. It, this is all about seeding. High score here in match number one immediately goes to the championship match. Second highest score goes to match number three. The two lowest scores will meet in match number two. Chameleon oil pattern, Randy. 39 feet of chameleon oil pattern. The players 
Well, they're going to start right around the track area, and they're going to play this very moderate hook into the pocket. But as this blue lizard lubricant starts to break down, don't be surprised if you don't see the players start to take air and start lofting it over the left gutter cap. We might have some lofting. Yeah, it's been air, a while since we've seen some air time, huh? Here's Andres Gomez. Yeah, you see the colors on his collar. His native Bogota, Colombia. Smooth, relaxed stroke, drops them all. Good to see him back. It really is. He's, he was battling a bit of a back injury, but he says he's feeling much better now, and obviously it shows. Here's the number one player on the planet right now, Jason Belmonte. Surprised? Nope, not at all. Neither am I. Say hello to A.J. Chapman from Manchester, Iowa. Third season on the tour. Through the nose, a little bit. <laughs> Interesting, A.J. going with urethane, as is Ronnie Russell. Welcome back, Ronnie Russell. Both urethane balls go through the face. Back to Chapman. Again, this is rapid fire bowling. We had it live last night mm -hmm. here on FS1. I think this really helps the players that haven't been here a whole lot. Like AJ Chapman, we saw it last night with Kyle Sherman and how he rebounded. Got his legs underneath him and Open frame for Russell. Again, it's not sudden death like it normally is in a st regular stepladder finals. Nobody's getting eliminated here. But a good early chance to kind of sort out your game, sort out your arsenal. Wrong one. Belmo picked up the wrong, the wrong rock. We saw him with us in studio calling two matches mm -hmm. last night in prime time. We see him actually bowling tonight. He could be on tomorrow night's show. He is on Thursday night's show. He is also on Friday night's show. He starts with back-to-back -back strikes. Basically saying that he could pretty much own FS1 primetime. For this week, yes. For this Although, week. Although, I would like to think that you and I own primetime this week. We elect to give some of these people <laughs> coverage, my friend. <laughs> well played, sir. Yes, sir. Well Gomez played. with an opening double. Russell, after that opening frame, steps up. Took care of Jimmy Cook and then Rafik Ishmael. Today in the round of 16 and the round of 8. Left the 10 there. It's too wobbly. He said it's too wobbly, so he doesn't like that bar reaction. Look for Ronnie to make a change with equipment and probably go to reactive resin. AJ Chapman, former first team All American at that. Powerhouse in Kansas, Wichita State University. All right, good chat, good chat. They pumped out some pretty good players Man, over the years. They, huh? yeah. Pretty good head coach there, too. Yeah, Gordon Vatican, yep. He, he's done a pretty good job there, along with Coach Lewis. You and I talked to Coach Gordo yeah. a couple weeks ago. I've been, uh, let's just tell Coach that uh, I've been looking at my uh, <laughs> front front stoop for a couple weeks now. I haven't, I haven't yep. seen anything from yep. him. You haven't got any uh, free swag yet? Mm-mm, mm, -mm. Yeah. mm, -mm. We politely asked. I'll send him a text. <laughs> there, AJ cleaning that one up, the 25 year old. Took care of Tom Doherty, 3 1, and a great match with Norm Duke. Belmonte looking to stay perfect through three. Now, last night on the Cheetah in this opening match, we saw numbers all over the place. A lot of guys scratching their head. This is more of normalcy, particularly from that man, Jason Belmonte. Spares now in yeah, three skinny frames. jeans didn't fit. 
best players in the world have missed a lot of spares on national television this season. This season, yeah, almost an epidemic. There you go, Ronnie. Native of Marion, Indiana, is Russell just outside Indianapolis. Got the whole family in yeah. tow with him here tonight. It's AJ. Gets locked and loaded. Three-time member of Team USA in 15, 16, and 17. And that was a ball change, Robbie. He, he got out of that urethane and went to a stronger reactive resin bowling ball, and you could see it with that change of direction down lane. There's blue oil all over that bowling ball. Three strikes, open frame. And we'll see what he does with this in the fourth. Back-to-back -back soft tens, that, that's where the six pin goes to the sidewall and just kind of collapse into the right gutter like it got hit by a taser. What's interesting about this positioning round, it, it, it's rapid fire. And some people can get caught up in the pace, and some you can see say, uh-oh, oh, hold on, I'm going to hit the brakes a little bit, and Belmo's doing just that. What's his world? We're just living in it. Yes. That's the truth! Yeah, get in the pit! Give me a hand bone! So Belmo has dropped the first four strikes here. Should he or any other bowler on tonight's show roll a perfect game, Randy? Everyone in America receives a free game of bowling, courtesy of Go Bowling. All you got to do to claim that free game, head on over to our good friend's website, GoBowling.com. Register for the Go Bowling Free America promotion. <laughs> It's like how many millions of free games? If somebody bowls 300, a lot. It's like a lot of millions. 450 million. A lot of millions. <laughs> I thought he would get out of that bowling ball. He hasn't. AJ Chapman did after two shots. And that's exactly what Ronnie Russell needs to do. So Belmo in the lead right now here in the fourth. As of now, he is your one seed. Again, this is your seeding match. Good shot. Shot. Back to Russell. What was that? Chapman will finish up the fourth here. Just one strike so far, Chapman came in the third. Good young player here. He's got the power in the revs and obviously the pedigree from Wichita State. Well, only his second time on television. He hit on a similar sentiment that you covered earlier, Randy. He, he likes this positioning round match. Chance to get the feet wet. Mm -hmm. Understand what's happening, understand the noises, the stress, the lights. Three soft tens in a row for Andres. Well, here we are in the fifth and essentially this is the story that we've been seeing all season. Everybody's chasing Belmo. <laughs> Woo! Bowling ball goes right past the nine pin. Converts that one. Back to Belmo, his first spare attempt. Just about 98% of the time, this is dropped here on the PBA Tour. First job for AJ Chapman. What do you think it was, Randy? No idea. Look the front desk at his dad's Good bowling shot. center. Good shot. Lightning Good shot. lanes in Manchester, Iowa. Where is Manchester, Iowa? Do you have a, a handheld device that Hang has on. a map app on it? Check. Strike there for Russell. Chapman set to close out the fifth. Slams that one into the pit. Good shot, good shot. Right now, it is Belmo running away with things in our positioning match. 
We'll wrap it up, figure out who's one, two, three, and four when our live coverage here on FS1 returns. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Log on to GoBowling.com. That's the iconic fist immortalizing the great Joe Lewis, the heavyweight champ for a record 12 years, moved to Detroit in 1926 at the age of 12. He was famously labeled a credit to his race. The human race, one of the best, Joe Lewis. Here now your Flow Bowling Tournament highlights, round of eight. We start with Tim Pfeiffer battling Jason Belmonte and it went the distance. Yeah, Pfeiffer gave Belmonte all he wanted, pushed him to five games, but Belmonte would impose his will. He moves on to the finals. Norm Duke so close to another television appearance this season. He's already won two titles, but in the end, it was Andres Gomez. Back-to-back -back wins earlier this season for Normie, but it was Andres Gomez doing what he does best, moving in and opening up the entire lane. He wins in five. Anthony Pepe taking on A.J. Chapman. Pepe the lefty. Pepe throws a great shot there to force a game four, but A.J. Chapman would close the door on Anthony Pepe. Chapman advances three games to one. And then kind of a rock fight between Rafik Ishmael and Ronnie Russell. Well, this was a dumpster fire of a match, but it was all Ronnie Russell in that last game to advance to the TV finals. He did it, taking care of Ishmael three games to one. Take a look at some of the other finishers. Ryan Schaefer had a strong outing here, finishing in ninth. Billy O in contention, but unable to make another TV show. He finished 10th. Tom Doherty putting together quite a nice little season despite my presence. He's in 12th. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Barnes, 14th. We saw Matt McNeil and Kyle Sherman last night in prime time. They finished 15 and 16. Back live with you inside Thunderbolt Lanes here in Allen Park, Michigan. Another sold out house. Take a look at the scoring through five frames right now. Jason Belmonte can max out with a 279. He is your leader to be your one seed, and he starts us off here in the sixth. He had an opening hand bone and then a nine spare in the fifth. Didn't like that from the get-go. Big lead for him halfway through this first match. El Monte starts off with a big strike there in the sixth. Can he get the week 10 out? The answer is no. Every Four wow. of those soft tens in a row for Andres. And that's because the ball's just not facing the one three pocket steep enough. It's just coming in late and behind the head pin, just enough to leave that quitter 10. Roddy staying with your thing. And the question is why? Does he have a plan? Is he trying to drag oil down the lane? Is he trying? to maybe create something for himself, or is he trying to disturb the other players? Well, he had some questions when we met with him just a few hours ago, you know, the game plan for moving into the arena, away from where they've been bowling all, all week long, just next door, and he said, am I gonna curve it? Am I gonna go with urethane? A feel it out process here. He did catch a double, and he's in second by a pin. Here's A.J. Chapman from Manchester, Iowa, which is located? I, I, I just got a text from someone yeah. that, that said it was... West of Dubuque. Yeah, it's between Dubuque and Waterloo, yeah. kind of halfway. North of Cedar Rapids as well. Just moved, though, to Texas, the Dallas area. to face up correctly. Look at him. <laughs> he just did that with his release. Made the ball hook up a little bit harder back part of the lane. 
AJ Chapman, no spare ball, man. He takes a strike ball, flattens out his wrist, and throws it nice and straight and hard. That's a 10 pit. Still just one strike for Chapman, came in the third. Belmo, your leader. Russell in second, Chapman in third, Gomez in fourth. Oh, it's going to be a tight battle for two, three, and four as Belmo looks to salt away the one seat. Five out of six strikes for Belmo. Ooh. Flying messenger in front of the 10. Good looking toss there from the third year pro. Look how quiet everything gets when Belmo steps up. <laughs> oh. Didn't like it. Oh, he squeezed on the skinny jeans from H&M and they fit <laughs> just barely. It slipped up my left hand. Ronnie Russell's not going to get caught in a sprint right now. But get up, and I'm going to go at my pace. <laughs> Sitting in second place right now, trying to win his fifth career tour title. Terrible break. Wow. See the blue line and the red line? The blue line was his last good strike. The red line, the last shot. Right. That's Andres Gomez. I, I stepping off and having a conversation as Russell steps up to take care of the seven pin. <laughs> so Bill Moe to clean his effort up here in the seventh. He can max out now to 259. Right now, the pecking order, Belmonte, Russell, Chapman, Gomez. Again, this year's seeding match. Oh, seven pin stays. How Nobody will be eliminated. How's that possible with that pin? It's just uh, defied gravity. He only threw like four pins at it. Let's see if Andres can double up here. Remember, four consecutive 10 pins in a row. Yeah, he's found a little something. Sure has. He's plagued by some soft 10 issues early on in this match. Looks like he might have solved it. Now Gomez is two. For now. Oh. Gomez temporarily up into second place. Belmo cleans that one up. So since the commercial break, it's been strike and then nine spare, nine spare for Belmo. Chapman working off just his second strike, kind of trying to get his first double. Oh. Well, we saw uh, Belmonte leave one of those on, on that same lane. Needed that one to kind of catch up. Or take the lead rather and go around Ronnie Russell. That's what he does. Ooh, ooh. No, thank you. So Gomez goes around Chapman and Russ and Ronnie Russell with that double in the seventh and eighth. So just like that. That's up top. All right, come on, knock him down. Strong good. Just keep trying. And just like that, Ronnie Russell goes from second to fourth. A Belmonte. Started with four in a row. Back on the strike train. Andres Gomez, remember that 10 pin he missed in frame three. 
and if it will, will it play any factor? Yes. Another really nice shot by Andre is after four consecutive soft tens, he comes back with a three bagger. Ronnie Russell going to a different bowling ball now. And that looks like reactive resin. So he's getting out of the urethane. He's gonna curve this one pretty good, Rob. Good looking curves. Yeah. Yeah, a huge move on that shot. He had to. Chapman with the strike. There's a Marshall Holman sighting. I think I saw him. Yeah. Hall of Famer Marshall Holman sighting in the crowd. Captain of the USA team versus the world. That show will air on Friday night. 8 Easter here on yeah. FS1. What a great finish by Andres Gomez. Now here's the, here's the deal. If Jason Belmonte doesn't strike on this ball, Andres Gomez can strike out in the 10th and lead this and become the number one seed. Gomez part of the world team with Belmo. That'll take on Team USA Friday. Oh, come on. That was a good one. Gomez can strike on the next ball and he will be the number one seed. Belmonte needs to spare and get good count to be the number two seed. So even with the open frame in the third. There's your number one seed. What a comeback. What a game Belmonte's bowled though. He's left a solid nine. Two 10 pins, that ripper seven. This could have been a really big game with a little bit of pin carry for Jason Belmonte. Well, he had that lights out start getting the opening four. Andres nice comeback the there, Andres. I don't know what you did different, but you tricked it up just the right way. He throws the last six in a row to claim the top spot. Ball change for Belmo. Mm-hmm. Definitely looking ahead. He's not locked into that second spot yet. Wow. Come on. Ball's not going, through the, not going through the pins the right way, but he will be your number two seed. And maybe that's a good thing because he's lost the last two times on television as your number one. Chapman. Messenger, get in the pit. This will be the battle for choice of starting lane in match number one. The Higher seed gets to choose choice of starting lane and finishing position. And it's going to be A.J. Chapman. A.J. is going to look at another ball. Now that this match is over, or this game is over as well. He'll probably stay with the one he threw before that. Somehow. All week long, Ronnie Russell right there led the Chameleon Championship drive. Both rounds of qualifying. Would have been the number one seed if we were doing the traditional five-man step ladder. Same with Rhino Page last night. AJ Chapman, hey, but that's three, not Ronnie the Russell, format. Right. At least you're still in. Play the game that you're in. Right? So Russell done with a 179. One more for A.J. Chapman. Yeah, he's looking at a strike ball. That's pretty good. That was just a search mission Absolutely. right there. Right, let's see what we can find yep. out. So one, two, three, four are confirmed. Guess who's joining us live next? <laughs> oh, yeah. His hair's going to be way better than that. Is it? Kyle yeah. Troop. Guaranteed. On the set. Oh, pick it out, my friend. Pick it out.
We welcome you back live here on FS1, continuing coverage of the PBA Chameleon Championship, our positioning round in the books right now. And Andres Gomez is your one C, Jason Belmonte, the two C, Chapman versus Russell, set to come. Time now for the PBA playoffs points list presented by Volvo. Follow no one. These are with the points already in play for tonight's match. Jason Belmonte in first place. He can add to that tacket there in second. Wes Malak, the big nasty, checking in at 11. Kyle True hanging out at number 16. We're going to be hearing from Kyle in just a moment. The cut line right there at 24. Darren Tang just below. So Kyle Troop joins us right now, and I got to say, number one, disappointed. I'm disappointed in you today. A tie, a shirt, I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> I mean, I thought you'd be happy with at least still having the Afro out, Rob. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 the Afro, uh, I've gotten caught just staring at it during the commercial <laughs> break a few times. He picked buddy. it out for you, hey, buddy. Hey, it's great to have you here, and we're just a couple weeks away from Portland, Maine as well. Right now, you're on track to make the, the playoff show, and that was really kind of your, your coming out party in Portland, Maine. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, the crowd and everything is so electrifying in Maine. Um, the atmosphere I really thrive off of. So I'm really excited for the PBA, the PBA playoffs coming up. Uh, hopefully we can you know, finish off this week and have a good Masters rolling into that because it's a pretty big opportunity for everybody out here on tour. Kyle, you were so hot there at the start of, uh, of the season, and then you had an injury. You had to miss a couple of events. So we're all wondering where you're at right now with that injury to your ring finger. Yeah, um, it's, it's gotten a little bit better. Uh, honestly, I'm still close to in the same boat as I was. I took weeks off. You know, I went and seen the doctor. Um, we're going to try and get through the month of April month there's nothing really scheduled so take a month off but uh hopefully hopefully then afro can hang on for two more weeks <laughs> hey, well we miss you out here are you ready to bring the afro into the booth i don't know if a headset can fit over that but we're going to find out my friend you're going to join us we're going to call large the, we're, <laughs> we're going to call the next game kyle troop will join us live can't wait for this one match number two coming your way next here on fs1 chapman versus russell here at the chameleon championship in the house, Randy Marshall Holman, the Hall of Famer. He is the USA manager for that Friday night USA versus the World Showdown. I wonder what kind of manager he's going to be. Is he like Billy Martin? Is he going to storm out there, cause problems? Yeah, a no. Freddie Blassie? Is he going to be calm? What do you think? He's, he's going to be that, uh, that, that calm, collected <laughs> manager <laughs> until... You know, they get close to winning. He's going to get really fired up like the old Marshall Holman. Here's a look at your updated stepladder bracket. Chapman Russell coming up first. Ronnie Russell will bat lead off here. There's Holman right over his left shoulder, right side of our screen. Marshall's are, is Marshall diagramming some plays over there. Russell, two-time member of Team USA. Kyle Troop, Rob Stone, Randy Peterson with you in studio. And Kyle, exactly the way he ended the last game, the 2 4 8 10 on that lane. And we talked about it while, uh, during break. He went with urethane for pretty much the entire game and then switched to reactive resin late as he's going to try to convert this by getting the bowling ball over here to the left side of the two pin, throwing that into the 10, and the ball take out the four and the eight. Oh, God. He didn't like it at release, but the result is so close. Why, why do you think the change late, Kyle? Yeah, I feel like with the urethane shape, obviously, uh, from what I know from Ronnie, that's not his A game, uh, but it was definitely in play on this 39-foot pattern. So I feel like he took a look at it, knowing that maybe he could pop a big game, and if not, uh, that option was weighed out, and you know now he's going into his A game of curving it more, going into the step ladder. How much do you know about A.J. Chapman's game? Chap Daddy. Uh, he's actually a part of Team Fish, uh, the Hook Fish. Um, he... I feel he's very, very impressive. Uh, he likes to curve it a lot. This is right into his wheelhouse. His best tour finish this season, 17th in Lubbock, which is where you finished third. Correct, Kyle? 
Yes, sir. That's Third. correct. Oh, he gave me a yes, sir. Snapped off by the uh, Dick Allen. Congrats to him last night. Yeah. Bowling. Dick becoming the second player this season to win multiple titles. Jason Belmonte could become the third tonight mm -hmm. or tomorrow night or Thursday night. Stick to your process. Stick to your process, he said. That's a big thing. Uh, definitely uh, being one of the younger players out on TV, you know, still uh, getting used to making a show here and there. Uh, that's that's the big thing. You know, sticking to your process, sticking to what you know and you know, doing your game. And it also helps with nerves. You know, when, you, when you're thinking about process, it, it, it tends to take your mind off of the other stuff you shouldn't be thinking about. Most definitely. The lights kind of dim down a little bit, and the game gets a little simpler. Man, he's got a good-looking game. Nice hand. He's got plenty of power. 17 to 5. So 17 at the arrows, out to about the 5-and-a-half board. So he's covering a little bit of terrain. Yeah, that was a that kind of seemed to be the play once the urethane balls kind of went away. Uh, guys got into third, fourth arrow, and you know pretty much five was the break point. The guys that struck more, they had a little bit further left down lane. Big strike for Russell, and it seems to be paying off the ball move. That is for more on that. Here's Kimberly. Rob, you guys are pretty spot on with the plan that you guys are talking about Ronnie had because during the break, Ronnie was talking to his tour rep, Rob Gottschall, and said that he wanted to get the best position he could, but he also wanted to break down the lane so that it was best for him, which is why he threw urethane in the first match to pull the oil down lane, which he had done all week long. So now he moved to a reactive ball and hoped that what he did in the first match blends it out so his ball doesn't over-respond. It's under responding, especially on the left lane. And that's back to back two four eight tens on that lane. Yeah, that was a that was a quite a surprise right there. I honestly thought that ball would hook. Um, the first thing that I think with that is the ball is too slow. It's too slow response to the friction. Uh, that one was in just a tad. It didn't quite hook, which that's where the urethane ball was going, where he kind of developed the oil oh, man, down lane. So uh, it might be a ball change on that lane for him. Because uh, I feel like that was a lot better than the first two, four, eight, ten. Get in there, Russell! Nice. Yeah. Now that's your hammer tough spare replay. Well done, Ronnie. Well done. Well, he needed that one too, Randy. He really did, and this is a, a great conversion as he throws the eight over into the ten pin. And that keeps him in the match early. Last thing you want to do is fall I like behind. I like that one a lot. Yeah. With two big open frames he was even lazy on the in line. the first three, Chapman working on a strike. Ronnie Russell hoping to stay close. Come on. Yeah, baby. Ooh, he gets the nine out late. Give me one. Well, Sunday, the Monster Energy Series moves over to FS1, NASCAR's finest battle around the paperclip in Martinsville. It all starts 2 Eastern only on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Kyle, you know, hailing from North Carolina, you're basically obligated to be a fan of NASCAR. Yeah, you have that, to be. Is that it for you? Is that the case for you? I nope. feel like I'm going to get kicked out of North Carolina. No. I'll say I'm not a NASCAR fan. That's but, all right. Uh, nope. Okay. More of a Carolina Panthers guy. Yeah! Phase two for A.J. Chapman in terms of his arsenal. So not a NASCAR guy. So are you UNC or are you Duke? Uh, I used to be a Duke fan. Kind of got out of the college scene a little bit too. Okay. I'm definitely not jumping back on the bandwagon this year. Best of luck to them. i say they get to the final four. Okay. There you go, Ronnie. That one hooks up. What happened? What was the difference in that shot, Kyle? I would think the ball speed was just a little bit slower. Obviously, you can see he missed a little in down lane, but to me, uh, it looked like he slowed it down on that lane. Uh, probably the conversation with the ball reps. Um, he feels like that lane's tighter. He mentioned even AJ's shot looked a little lazy down lane on that lane. Rodman Pearl. It's a symmetric Pearl, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. One more look at that strike from Russell. You know, Kyle, in, in uh, talking with Ronnie uh, this afternoon, he said one of the things he's really been working on is changing his tilt, trying to roll it end over end more. 
Look out. Way right, but it comes in in time. Now, now Rob, that ball went out for burger and fries. It came, came back. back. Steak and baked potato. Yeah. yeah. There, was, there was the wife and kids. Michelle, Caden, Cameron, Taylor. Watching this one. This thing is right of right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That tells me, I mean, um, the misses sometimes this week with the 39 feet, if you were far enough left and missed far enough right quickly, like in the front part of the lane, it would stand up off of it and give you that mixer hit. So. I mean, I'm surprised that ball even hit the head pin. That, that was pretty incredible. Come on, Kyle Truth, what just happened? What just happened there? Hambone! That was a hambone for the <laughs> chop daddy! <laughs> uh. AJ surrounded. really composed right now, too. I'm surrounded by ham bones. Ham bones and afros, PBA. <laughs> Here we go. It's a great Tuesday <laughs> night, man. It's a, wait a minute. Going up on a <laughs> Tuesday. Sounds like, sounds like another, sit, sounds like another uh, sitcom or yeah. maybe a... Yeah, new to Fox this fall. New to Fox this fall. Yeah. Ham, ham bones bone and afro. Ha ham bones and afros. <laughs> that is going to get canceled quickly. Well, you you tried the Tucker and that was it. Tucker and Tackett. Yeah. yeah. Well, chat, good chat. That's about all you can do there. Good shot. Except a good shot, move on. Yep. So if you throw it like that the next four frames, I like your chances. Kyle, would you say the carry in the building? Good, so-so, um, a little, a little well, pesky at As far times. as like in the main bay, obviously we're in the uh, the you know, the tournament lanes or the uh, stadium bay, so I've never bowled over here. But uh, I feel like the carry was pretty well this week. Uh, my struggle was finding the pocket, but I feel like the pins flew around a good bit. I've heard from locals that it's the other way around, but uh, I feel like Thunderbolt was pretty well to us. AJ with the lead. We're about halfway through match number two. The winner will take on your two seed, Jason Belmonte. I'm Jason Belmonte. Number 10! 10! And you're watching the PBA on FS1. Jason Belmonte, your number two seed. He is up in our next match. Right now, though, Chapman and Russell battling for the right to take on the best player on the planet right now. Here's a look at our Strike Track 3D from Ronnie Russell. Yeah, and this is the difference between urethane and reactive resin. Red ball urethane, that's how Ronnie Russell started. Blue ball reactive resin. Huge difference in the two. 11 boards at the arrows. And you can see just by the tracers just how much more the reactive resin ball hooks. I'll show you right here on the old pattern what he did. This is kind of where he was in game one with the urethane. He goes to reactive resin and it was completely different ball game. He was playing that big inside loop. Now, that's what the pros are forced to deal with, right, Randy? Adjustments, because the way the lanes are breaking things down. Take another look at our updated scorebook. And Russell is down 30 as he gets set to close out the sixth. Kyle Troop joining us live. Hold on, you know what you got to do, right? Just spin spin the afro just a little bit just see the you gotta, are you gonna it pick it out or pick it, in. it, or pick it then okay. then now no hold it. you gotta spin it kyle nope nope other way other way uh, yeah there it is oh yeah beautiful big, big yep. division yep. right there in the, the afro the capra <laughs> i love it oh kyle great to have you here with us live tonight on fs1 second of five straight nights of pba in prime time here on fs1 Best week of bowling. It is a darn good week here at the World Series of Bowling just outside Detroit now in part. Russell, what do you got for us, kid? Yeah, another jack. So much needed three bagger after some early struggles. Started in the first with an open frame, a strike in the second, six spare in the third. Since then, nothing but strikes. And one more strike here in the seventh. He can cut the deficit to 10. Has he figured out the Blue Lizard lubricant? That's the question. Right 
would have to say that that left lane is definitely curving more. Uh, I mean, that was two boards left of the last shot down lane on that lane, and it went through it just as hard. So the right lane is probably the deciding factor in this match, if I had to guess. Kyle, it almost looks like he has the entire right side of the lane now on that lane. And uh, if you know Ronnie Russell, that's when he's really good, whenever he knows his ball's going to hook from the right every time. Listen, I can strike if I have the entire right side of the lane. Yeah, I'm sure there's an eight pin. Oh. That's well that. played. No trouble. Four, seven. So after four right, strikes, right. Chapman is now going to face his second spare conversion. Relax. Kyle, what'd you see here? Uh, a little left off his hand, a couple boards down lane, kind of caught it a little bit. Uh, commercial break. That's all I believe that is. I know I normally move about two left off of a commercial. If he did or not, who knows? But. Well, great break, not leaving the big four in just the four seven. A little spare, clean it up. We're back on TV. Right, come on. Back on here. Back on here. There you go. Russell working on a four bagger. AJ Chapman has an eight pin lead going into frame eight. It's a big shot here on the match. If he if he doesn't strike here, uh, I feel like that gives all the momentum to Ronnie going on the four bagger. But an answer here with a good strike puts the pressure right back on Ronnie, knowing that he's still here. He's still in this match. Just the second time on television for Chapman. <laughs> yeah, a real good shot and bad result. <laughs> Kyle, would you say that the better of the two lanes is the left lane? I would have to say the left lane is a little bit better just because there seems to be a little bit more hook. Um, that is the second wrap Tenny's left, which to me that, that tells me the urethane carry down is kind of pushing the ball too far down the lane for him. So it's coming in just a tad behind it. And there you have the lovely ring and 10 that everyone despises. Chapman takes care of that. The PBA and Slap It On have created custom vinyl wall decals of some of your favorite PBA players. Large vinyl decals readily attached to most smooth flat surfaces can be easily removed and relocated. Randy, how many Kyle Troops Slap It Ons do you have in your bedroom right now? Is it, what's the count at? Is it three I or four? I have three, actually. Okay. It, and there's one in the bathroom. Yep, that makes sense. Action yeah. shots of more than 30 PBA Tour players and legends available. <laughs> So Russell, head on over to PBA.com, click the Slap It On banner to order your favorite player. The one in the bathroom is right next to where my hair dryer hangs. Mm -hmm. you know, Inspiration. So yeah, it's absolutely. Fitting. I tried it. No matter how much gel and hair dryer I use, I can't get close, but it is inspirational. Ronnie Russell with another beautiful shot, and now he's got a five-bagger and the lead for the first time in this match. Max score for Russell, 259. Max score, A.J. Chapman, 246. Big shot here in the ninth. Ronnie Russell, if he strikes here in the ninth frame, cannot be shut out. Here we go! Crack open a six-pack with Ronnie Russell. The lead swells to 13. Well, it's a great comeback for Ronnie Russell. Listen to this. And remember that huge conversion in the third frame for Ronnie when he left the 2 4 8 10 for the second time on the left lane, and he made it. What do you got, AJ? What do you got here, kid? Oh, gutsy strike from Chap Daddy. Stand here. Boy, he's pulled a really nice Stand game. He just made that one bad shot out of commercial in the seventh. He doesn't look faced. He belongs here. He's really bowling nicely, going along nicely. Just 10 pins other than the blemish in the seventh. Everything else strikes. Yeah, that is back-to-back -back wrap tens for him on this left lane, correct? Yep. So, Kyle, what do you do after back-to-back -back ring tens on that same lane? You step up now. What's the thought process? Uh, for me, I want to change the angle just a tad, so I probably move left, maybe one or two, and move up, slow the ball down a little bit, try and catch a mixer, just try and change how the ball goes through the pins. Yes. Yeah. Double for Chapman. Good call there. 
Kyle. I feel like I will uh, grant that to the great execution of AJ Chapman. <laughs> Well, at any time you see the six go to the sidewall and snap the 10 out like that, that's always a great sign for a right-hander. Chapman asked for a re-rack. You see under his name there on the lower left of your screen, he's got one more hash mark left, one more re-rack. Russell has two, should he elect to use them. Well, this is a tight finish here in match number two. The winner to take on your two seed, Jason Belmonte. Andres Gomez is your one seed. This strike here will force Ronnie Russell to get the first strike in the 10th. Beauty. Yeah. Really managed this game nicely, Kyle. It's a very well executed yep. game. Two wrap 10s. Couldn't ask for a better game on television. Through the back four to force his opponent to show up in the 10th. Yep. Your job is done there, AJ. Great bowling. Good news for Ronnie Russell, who will finish on the right lane and who will need the first strike in the 10th. Ronnie has not missed yet on the right lane. Oh boy. It's okay. All right. Still enough count. Yeah. Pretty much got to throw the first one and keep it on the lane. Russell needs a strike and good count, and he'll move on to face Jason Belmonte. Huh? <sighs> Strike an eight to move on. on and that's why you finish the game AJ Chapman did his job Ronnie Russell just a little late into the pocket almost leaves the pocket 7-10 but it really didn't matter 10 pin standing and AJ Chapman's moving on great balling by Ronnie Russell great ball, this week great ball. he needed it yep he needed a good week and he got he really one. good he's gonna get in the car he's gonna drive home to Indy he's gonna think about what could have been but he's got a big event coming up in a couple days in Las Vegas, too, my friends. Up next, your two seed and the number one ranked player in the world, Jason Belmonte. It's the semifinals of the Chameleon Championship live next. Another standing room only crowd here at Thunder Bowl Lanes in Allen Park, Michigan. Live coverage of the PBA Chameleon Championship rolling on. Just moments ago, Ronnie Russell in the 10th frame needing a strike. And instead, the 10 defies him. AJ Chapman, Chap Daddy, moves on to the semifinal where he'll take on that man waiting in the wings, going through warm up right now. Jason Belmonte. Here's your Ebonite flashback, and it takes us back, guys, a decade to the very first PBA World Series of Bowling, the Chameleon Championship. Bill O'Neill sweating it out versus Ronnie Russell. O'Neill connecting when it counted, including all three strikes in the 10th to seal the 205 192 victory. Walked away with his first career PBA Tour title. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, oh, Kyle Troop, back here with you. Bill O'Neill still celebrating from <laughs> 10 years ago. Your phone has been awfully busy since you joined yeah. us up here in the booth, my friend. Yeah, I'm with two of the best in the business. Oh, is that I right? I could have not <laughs> yeah. up All right, right now. something like that. Jason Belmonte coming up next. I'm curious, what, what are the guys in the back room, the players, what do they say about Jason Belmonte and the season he's having? Uh, I mean, we're, we're literally witnessing greatness. I mean, we're witnessing the Tiger Woods of bowling. You know, we've heard that many times. He's, he's the greatest player on the planet right now. And uh, it's amazing to watch. Um, not very fun to bowl against. Right. But, uh, you know, we hope the best for him if we're not on the show because when greats are great, you just let them be. 
take a look at your updated step ladder. Chapman, 11 better than Russell. So he gets the honor, the privilege to take on Jason Belmonte in match number three. But remember, it's Andres Gomez, the Colombian, waiting as your one seed. Winner of this one moves on to the title match. And, and what a contrast in in history between these two guys, right? I mean, this is this is a youngster, Chapman, just his third year on the tour has never won, taking on a guy who is in the midst of one of those career-defying seasons. One of the best ever, Jason Belmonte. And right away, Chapman. Holy cow. The interesting thing with AJ is he can pretty much play close to the same part of the lane as Belmo for the most part. Uh, he's a big, you know, big curve player, big rev player. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the lanes develop through the next match and whatnot with both of them probably curving it a good bit. The 2-8 converted 92% of the time on the tour. Kyle, I have a question for you. Is AJ intimidated at all by Jason Belmonte? If I had to be honest, I believe his butt cheeks might be just a little tighter right yeah, now. Yeah, and you just saw, saw him squeeze one pin First out, but not both. Hooked. It's, a, it's an intimidating thing, bowling the best bowler in the world. You know, I, I remember when I was a young, cocky kid going going up against Marshall Holman in match play, and I'm like, I'm so going to kick Marshall's butt, and he just, like, wiped the floor with me. And, and you know, it, it's fine to go in with that kind of attitude, but what is the reality? The reality is, how are you not intimidated by this guy? Yeah, the, the mindset going in is you have to feel like you're the best bowler on the planet, and you can beat anybody, because he is the best bowler, and you have to have that mindset going in. Well, and Jason is the guy who does come in with that mindset, saying every tournament I enter, I am expecting myself to win. I mean, I feel like um, when you're one of the best in the, in the business, that's the mindset that you have to have. Uh, it's the killer instinct that we see from Belmo week in and week out. It's funny, I went out with a couple of the guys after the show last night, and they asked me, they said, hey, how was, how was Belmo in the booth with you guys? Did, did he have any blunders? Did he screw up? I was like, no, he did, he did a really good job, solid job. And there was this hint of disappointment in them <laughs> because they're so sick of him succeeding in everything. And, and these are friends of his saying, man, you know, I, I, give us something. Give us something to chew on, something we can take him down a peg a little bit because he is just on an absolute roll. Yeah, I mean, he, he's bowling great. He's great for the sport. He's a great, you know, gentleman himself. Uh, he knows his role right now, and he's yeah. doing a very good job at it, representing the PBA and everything that we represent. Well, Kyle, uh, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this. You're playing a big part as well, my friend. And you know, TMZ fell in love with you a few weeks ago. But listen, they're, they're not isolated. Uh, I know a lot of people who know nothing about bowling, but they know who you are, and they know your look. And that, in turn, is bringing eyeballs and attention to a sport that, that is always looking for more. Most definitely. You know, I'm very humbled to any of the attention that I get. Obviously, I'm just blessed to be out here competing you know, at the elite level on the PBA Tour. And, and uh, the crowds like me. I like being a crowd favorite. Yeah. And so I'm blessed to be able to do it and you know, help the PBA. The more viewers, the better. Well, I have a, a, a story. So getting back to Belmonte. Few are as good with the, along with all of the other stuff that you guys mentioned, few are as good with the fans as that man right there. But I do have a Kyle Tube story. I was getting my hair cut at this new barbershop, new fancy barbershop in Orlando. And this guy, I can't remember his name, I got his card. And we got to talking, so what do you do? And I all oh, like do television for Fox. Oh, we're, what sport do you, do you cover? And I go, I cover pro professional bowling. And he goes, how about that guy with the hair? And I go, Kyle Choup, and he goes, that's him. Guy's never watched bowling before, saw Kyle on, and was glued to the television. And sometimes you got to have a little extra, little extra act sometimes. So you're, you're, you're doing very well for, for our sport as, as well, Kyle, and keep going well, we all right appreciate now. that. That's why I geared down a little bit speed-wise, so can he keep going that way? A couple more. Here's tonight's yeah. Columbia 300 fun fact. Jason Belmonte right there entered this year's World Series of Bowling as the all-time earnings leader in World Series of Bowling competition, having won over $317,000. Again, this is the 10th year of the World Series of Bowling. That's right. Drinks on Belmo. Bad oh, shot. Right at target there, and he's in trouble in the third. Yeah, bad shot. About three boards. 
to the right of his previous shot on that lane that struck. And rarely do you see him falling off a lot of shots, especially when he's firing on all cylinders, but that time it was wide. 210 converted 15% of the time on the tour. That's always the stinger there when you cut it in front of it. Yep. Unfortunately, it's still a miss, and you know why you missed it, but come on, I sent it over there. It's supposed to knock it down, is how I feel. Just overcut it. Just like in pool. Yep. Just overcut the pocket just a little bit. So after a start with the strike, it's been spare open frame for Belmo. As we begin the fourth, he's down 12, sitting on career tour title number 19, trying to get to 20. Also trying to earn that 11th major which he'll go for Thursday night live here on FS1. Back on the strike train. Only one win this season, but it was a major, the TOC, giving him 10 for his career. But as we mentioned at the outset, his sixth TV show this season, five singles, one double. This is where A.J. Chapman has to take full command of this match. He's been given a... a, 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 a Huge opening by Jason with that split in the third. He's working on a double. This is where you step up as a young player looking for your first win and saying, I'm going to take the best player in the world out, and I'm going to take him out now. Exactly what you have to do against the best player in the world. It gives you an opening. I feel like right there in that position, if he doesn't strike, that's an opening for Jason. Kyle, I saw you kind of flick your right wrist right there as you were watching that one go down the lane. Yeah, I felt like that was just a little in. Just wanted to go through it. You know, I didn't want it to, to overcheck or go high. It looked like a good shot off of AJ's hand. Get another packed house here at Thunder Bowl Lane. Standing room only, second night in a row. Crowds were unbelievable this week here in Thunder Bowl. It's always great to have a big crowd behind us throughout the week. Great, one of the, one great of the best bowling. bowling communities out there. Great bowling city. Roll, roll. Exactly what you have to do. This is really settling into AJ's wheelhouse. Uh, he's definitely a guy that likes to curve it. He's comfortable now. This is third game on television, whether it's his second show or not. When you get a third game in on TV, uh, you're comfortable and you just become another bowler bowling another day of competition. Rarely do you see that minus 32 next to Belmo. One thing I have noticed with Jason, uh, which is might be a little different from the previous shows this year, he's throwing it harder. Normally we see him with a little bit softer speed, curving it a little more. Uh, see the, the Kegel is reading over 20 miles an hour every shot. Uh, that might be one of the first times this year on TV he's been throwing it firmer, which the one shot that he fell off of might be from you know trying to throw it harder because we definitely get our ball speed from our legs. So it might be a little more difficult for him to stay on line. He's working off his first pair here in match three, the winner to take on Andres Gomez. Oh, oh. Well, not a whole lot you can say about that. Pretty good shot and, you know, it, it amazes me, Kyle, that you all don't leave more of those. But you're so good at ma manipulating your, your ball reaction to where it comes off the end of the pattern a little bit softer. But with all your power, with all Jason's power, I would think you'd leave a lot of solid nines. And, well, that time he paid for possessing that, that kind of power. That's a disappointed walk away. He knew he needed a strike right there instead, a nine spare. Belmo in a bit of a pickle right now. The youngster, A.J. Chapman, with the upper hand. Thursday night, live 8 Eastern, right here on FS1. World Series of Bowling rolls on, a major on the line. It's the PBA World Championship. Jason Belmonte is your one seed. McNeil, O'Neill, Buttruff, B.J. Moore, Belmo seeking that PBA record 11th major title. 
And there's the potential out there for a $1 million bonus if we get a 300 game in our title match. Take a look now at our game summary, courtesy of Strike Track. Randall? Yeah, both players playing almost identical lines to the pocket as you see the tracers here. But the big difference right now is rev rate, obviously, that going to Belmonte. But because that rev rate is higher, remember they're both playing the same line, Belmonte has to throw it faster. Rob Stone. Wow. Randy Peterson, Kyle Troop joining us live here in the booth as we continue calling match number three. AJ Chapman, a guy you are close with, Kyle. What Look, have you seen from him tonight? Uh, he looks very comfortable. Uh, he's in his wheelhouse. This is his A game. I feel like this is one of the biggest shots of the game right here. Coming off the commercial break, if he strikes here, he goes up a commanding 30 pins. <laughs> Quite what we wanted. Yeah, that's what commercial breaks will do to you sometimes. Wow. Well, remember the last time at a commercial break he went high. Kyle made mention of the fact that a lot of times Kyle will make a move, a say in. one or Fast, two boards maybe? left. Maybe he did that and it didn't work. But this is the opening that Belmonte was looking for, especially if AJ Chapman doesn't convert the 24810. Chapman with an open frame in the first. Tough challenge here to cover this in the sixth. It's only covered 9% of the time on the tour. Oh, okay. Huge opening now for Belmonte as it's now just a five pin deficit for him. Quickly we go downstairs. Kimberly standing by with your fourth place finisher, Ronnie Russell. Thanks Rob. So Ronnie, tough break. You needed a strike in the 10th. You didn't get it. What happened? Uh, I, mean, I threw it pretty good uh, compared to the last few shots in that lane. And if anything, I could have been a touch firm, but do it pretty good. What do you see happening out on the lanes right now? I mean, the, the right side's getting pretty burnt up, pretty far out in the track, and uh, I think, you know, the guy's just going to keep booming it and keep moving left and throwing it further right, so uh, you got to give the advantage right now to, to Andre being able to throw it really slow and get in there and do it. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Ronnie. Back on the strike train is Chapman. Good to see Ronnie Russell back on TV getting that fourth place finish. It's been a while since we've seen him, and we hope uh, it's not a one and done appearance for him this season. But the opening has been handed to Jason Belmonte. Jason gave AJ one in the third with an open frame. And now Bellman, Belmonte rather, can make some serious headway right here in the seventh. He can actually take the lead with a strike in the seventh and eighth. I mean, he's really bringing it, too. He's approaching almost 21 miles an hour. I think Kyle brings up a great point in, in, in how fast he's throwing it. I feel like over the years, just learning, like being a, a firmer, a higher ball speed player to begin with, especially once the urethane kind of got down the lane a little bit, the carry issues really become a lot more difficult when you're trying to play it firmer okay. and straighter instead of slower and around the urethane carry down mm -hmm. and right now Belmo's kind of going with the firmer straighter the cleaner more responsive ball down lane if he misses it a tad at the bottom you know or something like that then he leaves a 10 pin so he's kind of on a, uh, a tricky line I feel like right now Belmo just used the first of his two re -racks. smart move after two not so great results from what he wanted take a minute to really think about what's going on slow the pace back down and you know, step up here and throw a commanding strike in the eighth frame just to let him know I'm still the best bowler in the world. I'm still here. Back to back nine spares for Belmo. Okay. Wow. Can all three of us like work together to try and figure out well it, it <laughs> it's it's too fast now so there has to be some type of an adjustment with speed in my opinion Jason Belmonte needs to move maybe a little bit to the left open up his angles and throw it slower yeah I think just the big the big thing right now is and I know the ball he's throwing is a uh, a cleaner pearl ball so not only is he throwing it hard but he's throwing a very clean ball as well ball that stores energy it's very smooth and very
very clean through the front part of the lane, so it's going to store energy for a long time. And and a lot of times you get a little aggressive okay. with ball speed with a, with a okay. bowling ball that isn't that aggressive, and you can blow right through the pocket just like Jason Belmonte did right there. Belmo had his chance. He did not take advantage of it. It's Chapman's game to lose. He can max out with the 241. If he goes light again on this ball, I think he's in trouble, especially since he has to finish on this lane. He moved in. That looked like he moved in and got softer. His, his ball speed definitely came down. That was 17 points at six. A mile an hour slower, he moved in. Look at that bent elbow and cup wrist at the bottom. He got all over this shot. Yeah, that was close to a mile an hour slower. And I think that was just the TV, the TV break kind of got a little firm to him. Settled in, threw a good shot on the left lane and then answered back on the right lane. Shot of the game, right? The crowd knows how important this one is. Definitely silent. And a 7-10. 7-10, Swift. 7-10 on TV. Three times it's been done. Dang it. All right. Unreal. What a terrible break. Put the good touch on that shot, and it just hits just a little flat. You see the three players that have made the 7-10 conversion percentage under 1%. But it's been made here throughout the World Series of Bowling. How many times, Kyle? Four, I believe. That's amazing. Terrible break. Guess who's got a chance now to step up in the ninth and tenth and shut out A.J. Chapman? Oh, that's, that's, that sucks. Yeah. That was pretty close. It was bad. Yeah, that's how it felt. Max score, Belmonte, 213. Max Shame. score for A.J. Chapman, 207. Belmo to win. I think he needs to strike on this ball. Must strike if he wants to shut him out. He was just walking back. That was A.J. Chapman walking <coughs> back and sitting down. Belmonte's gonna regroup. this game on that lane and His ball speed was under 20 and nothing but shrapnel when that ball hit the pins two and five he goes on to bowl Andres Gomez for the title we've been hyping him all night long only one strike on this left lane it's definitely been the tricky one for him and only one strike since the commercial break Remember the last time on this lane, he went light and left the 2-8. Yep. That wasn't light. That ball almost finished in the seven pin spot. Kyle, if you're him, do you make an adjustment off of that shot? I have always been taught that when you need it, move one left and hit it no, harder. Take my second right. So I would imagine with that one going high flush, he probably moves one left and gives it the Belmo strap. This is high flush. Wow. The four and the seven looked like they just got trapped and went off the pin deck simultaneously. Graphic tells the story. Striking five for the win and to advance to the title game versus Andres Gomez. Celebration from Belmo. Oh, I thought that was good. Four, two and four, if he gets one. 
walked away, hand in the air. Oh, how? You don't see that too often from you, Jason. If he, if he sure really don't. likes it, it's normally pretty good. Yeah. So that just tells me how tricky the lanes are right now. If, if he really liked that one and that was the result. <sighs> I mean, we're looking at a 2-0 winner going into the title match right now, so. Chapman still has life. But he'll need a double in the 10th frame and good count. A double in four for Chapman. So Belmo takes a seat right on 200. Oh, I nodded that one. That was a good one, brother. It was a little firmer, just the way I wanted. The first one I threw it, I threw it way too soft. Oh, like, not way too soft, but... No, but I mean... And that last one, I'm like, oh my god, that's nutted. No. You just hear how much he liked that second one in the 10th. Belmo takes a seat. AJ Chapman, what do you got, kid? Two strikes and four for the win. shot there by A.J. Chapman coming off of the pocket 7-10 on the left lane. Two strikes here, he's moving on because he'll have no problem getting four. Biggest shot of this young man's career right here. 25 years old, third year on the tour. Kind of reminiscent of last night with Kyle Sherman. to the title match. He got a wide right and he came back a little late leaving that soft 10. Sorry. Can you prove that? But I'll tell you I what, the, the difference in this same. match, that pocket 7-10 he you left know. in the ninth frame God. while he was working on a double. Wild finish in our semi. Chapman denied by the 10 pin. Belmo moves on to another title match. We welcome you back, Jason Belmonte, a dramatic conclusion. He advances with the 200-197 win. He's off to your title match to take on Andres Gomez. Rob Stone, Kyle Troop, Randy Sh Peterson back here with you. Time now for our Go Bowling with Randy segment. This week, or tonight rather, it's a Facebook question. And the point is some uh, lofting. Yeah, uh, L L Lornis? No, don't even matter. It's a tough name. Okay, uh, well... This person would like to know how to loft it with more consistency. And the way, uh, the way we, we would uh, loft it with consistency would be, first we'd take some knee bend out. That would get us higher off of, the, off of the floor. That would make our launch angle a lot higher. And then if you do use your thumb, add tape. Kyle, how do you go about lofting it with two hands not using a thumb? Well, the first thing I do is I do not use thumb tape. Um, so that's an advantage, but uh, yeah, like you said, the the upper with a little more upper body. Right. Uh, I think the big point too is being stable at the line. Mm -hmm. uh, I know myself. Whenever I try and loft, that I get a little, I fall off a lot of shots. So I think the other good point, along with the upper with less spine tilt, would be more stability at the foul line. Right. Kyle, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, man. Thanks. S send us, send you, out, send yourself out in style. Rob, Randy, I have greatly enjoyed this commentary yes, with you yeah. guys. Pick it out. So I'm going to leave pick you out Randall. with a pick Randy it out, my man. pick out there to finish the show. <laughs> Title match uninterrupted coming your way. Gomez, Belmo, one versus two, next on FS1.
The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Log on to GoBowling.com. Good look at the Motor City, Detroit, home to the first mile of Concrete Highway. Did you know that, Randy? Had no idea. First four-way, three-color traffic light, world's first urban freeway as well. Also ranks number one in the nation in potato chip consumption per capita. Good to know. You know what else I know? Tell me. My hair's never looked better. You're right. You're right. I'm not denying that at all. It was a great, some great pick action for you. And what a title match we have, Randy, coming up for you. Andres Gomez, Jason Belmonte. Gomez looking for tour title number four. Belmo trying to hit that 20 mark. And remember, he's going to be in Thursday's show as well, going for that 11th major. We could even see him tomorrow night in the Scorpion Championship. He's in the round of 16. He's done with this. He goes back home focuses round of 16 tomorrow noon eastern trying to get to the round eight and trying to get to another show jason belmonte on top of the bowling world right now yeah there is nobody better at this sport on this planet than that man jason belmonte you know looking at the numbers right off the bat he actually threw that shot slower, Rob. And that was one of the things I was wondering about going into this title match. If he would move in, open up his angles, and soften up his ball speed, he did exactly that on his opening shot. You and Kyle Troop found that immediately. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's going too fast. Put the brakes on it just a little bit. And the success rate has spiked. Here's Andres Gomez. <laughs> Through the nose. Three, six, ten. Here's Randy now with our track technique for our one seed. And I want you to watch the drift by Andres Gomez as he goes this way. He walks away from that arm swing, that beautiful arm swing that goes nice and straight. And then it allows him to tuck it underneath that right shoulder. Look how far underneath that shoulder he gets. Look at the body, hips out of the way. And that's what helps him create that right to left motion. His last television win right here, Randy, yep. Allen Park, Michigan, but yep. all the way back in 2013 when he won the Carmen Salvino Classic. And this is not the start he was expecting here in the championship match. Highlight is not the way you want to start in terms of ball reaction and when you're going up against the greatest player on the planet. Back in the round of 16, Gomez took care of Tom Doherty, 3-1. to one. Round of 8, a thrilling match with Norm Duke, won that one 3-2. And then in our positioning match, Won it with a 235, had the last six strikes, eight total. But he's in early dire straits here in our championship match. Back-to-back -back opening spares for Gomez. Seven spare, eight spare. Belmo with the strike as he moves to the right lane. He's had a lot of success here at the World Series of Bowling. Go back to 2011, won three titles, the Chameleon, the Shark, and the PBA Players Championship. Back-to-back -back opening jacks. Yeah, that got down there with bad intentions, didn't it? Yeah, that bowl was not going to a poetry reading. That was going to a fist fight. <laughs> so here's Belmo. What he could accomplish here at the 2019 WSOB. He's already in the round of 16 tomorrow for the Scorpion. He's already your top seed for the PBA World Championship. And then Friday night, he's going to compete with the World Team versus Team USA. Again, all of our coverage this week coming your way at 8 Eastern in prime time here on FS1. Belmo looking for an opening triple here in the championship match. <laughs> Ten thought about it, wobbled, but wouldn't go down. Good start for Jason. Again, to get that 
late 10 out, it's just a little softer speed to allow the ball a little more time to hook up into the pocket. Touched it. Hang on. Are you kidding me? That's good, clean living. When you're having a good season, you're having a good season. Wow. My goodness. Yeah, nice shot. First strike for Gomez. Belmonte does it with power. Gomez does, does it with touch. He said, you know, I, I, I tried to be the most versatile guy out here. It didn't work. I went back to old school. I went back to what I do best, and that's a really soft hand at the release point and curving the lane. He brought up the back injury he had in Lubbock, Texas. Told us it kind of came out of the blue. He might have kind of pushed it with some work on the computer, playing cards with the guys during the downtime. Couldn't bowl the next day, he said. Couldn't practice for about a week. Put the TOC in jeopardy. But the TOC, he, he was able to get out there, had a pretty good okay. session, actually. Mm -hmm. Says he's feeling better right now. Good tournament, TOC. And here we see him right over the, tw the uh, 25th board and leaving that vicious ring in 10. Throwing a supersonic. A more traditional takedown of the 10 pin. <laughs> Belmo up 11, steps up in the fourth. Strike, strike, nine spare. Facial fescue has gotten a little bit thicker since he started tonight. Again, coming behind the head pin. But a little bit faster on that shot than his first initial shot on the left lane. Leaves the 10 pin again. We know what just happened in the third frame, barely knocking it down. Playing in the head at all? Not his. It's such a fine line though, Rob. If he gets too soft with that, with the RPMs that he creates, it could go through the nose and leave the ugliest split you've ever seen. <laughs> now the posture said it all. Yeah. So now back to back. Nine spares. Interesting, a re-rack here in the fifth. I think he wants to buy a little time to think about his shot shape, his process. Belmo will be in the World Championship as your one seed Thursday, 8 Eastern, right here on FS1. We're back with you live tomorrow night as well for the Scorpion Championship. Belmo could be on that show as well. time 19.2 the shot prior 20.2 the big difference another mile an hour softer and it allows the ball time to hook into the pocket that was perfect these guys don't have access like we do to the mph's no but they have they have something we don't have and that's feel they can feel when it's faster they know when it's fast they can feel at the moment the bowling ball leaves their hand whether or not it's perfect Second strike of the title match for Gomez. Needs to start pairing them, though. And there's the contrast in the two players and the difference in power. Andres is at 17.2 miles an hour. Two to three miles an hour slower than Belmonte. That may not seem like a lot, but when you're talking about 60 feet, it translates uh, into quite a, a bit of difference in terms of ball speed. 
This is a big week for Gomez as well, sitting at 27th on the PBA playoff points list. Knowing he's going to finish at worst second. <laughs> Leaves the 10 pin. Just a lack of power on that shot. Got to catch it so good. You heard him just say it. I've got to catch it so good. Imagine that same hit with another 150 RPMs behind it, and that probably is 10 in the pit. But that's today's modern power game. Gomez takes care of the spare. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson here with you at historic Thunder Bowl Lanes in Allen Park, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. You're watching live coverage of the PBA Chameleon Championship match. Jason Belmonte, your two seed. Andres Gomez, your one seed. But Jason Belmonte, the man you're looking at right now, is the best bowler on the planet right now. Messenger! Try to take a swipe at the 10, but missed. Short pin. As it slung around. Here you go, head pin to the sidewall, comes off that sidewall. Runs into another pin, changes its direction. But not long enough to get the 10. Three strikes, three nine spares for Belmo, who just barely oh. advanced past A.J. Chapman. In fact, he needed to make sure the math was correct. And he actually sent out this tweet, which was essentially saying, congratulations, A.J. Chapman, you bowled a great game. I'm done for the night. And then he said, wait a second, what just happened? And went to the scorer's table and said, can you, can you confirm that for me? Give me that number. Belmo here in our title match. And Belmo ready to start the seventh. Up 10. Has to be aced out of your hand. <laughs> wow. Oh, this place is tough. Just a little high flush as the ball finishes in the eight pin spot. He goes right by the nine pin. It's not the first nine pin he's left tonight. He can max at 237. Gomez can max out at 238 right now. Priority number one, though, is take care of this nine pin. Belmonte looking for title number 20 in joining an elite group. Names like Dick Ritger. Yeah. Is that not good? Oh, who? what's the other name I'm thinking? Is it Wayne Webb? Amleto Monticelli? All Hall of Famers, as will Jason be one day. Gomez leaves the 10. Wow. Just hasn't been able to get on track, Randy. Seven spare, eight spare, strike. Nine spare, strike. Nine spare, and now another opportunity for a nine spare. Well, he hasn't missed the pocket since the third frame, but he's, yeah. he's created so much angle, Rob, that it's hard for him to get his ball to fit perfect in the 1-3. And that's the only way he's going to strike from that angle. Unless he goes light. Maybe carries a light mixer. Is that what you'd recommend? Well, I mean, <laughs> if it was me, I'd play the same angle and just try to rip the holes out of it harder to get it to finish a little higher flush. It's interesting, Gomez and Belmo are gonna be teammates Friday night in that Team USA versus the World matchup. Eight Eastern here on FS1. Down 10, we begin the eighth. Just his third strike here in our title match. I mean, he knows what he needs to do, and it, now it's just a matter of getting your body to wow. tough. to perform the task. And that that margin for error is very small right now for both players, not to hit the pocket, but to get all ten out. We had an open hand. There used to be a guy by the name of Pete Weber that did that a lot. 
That open hand at release. Fourth strike for Belmo. And that's to maintain a 10 pin lead. I got a feeling this ninth frame may be the tell all for this title match. Whoever does or doesn't strike. Excuse me, Dave. Can I please take my second re rack? The Bill polite, the polite ask for the re rack. Very polite. Uh, Bill Monty will finish the match on the right lane. Gomez is going to finish the match on the left lane. He struck once on the left lane, and that was the last shot that he threw. Four strikes for Belmonte, three for Andres Gomez. Belmonte, 10 pin, 10 pin, 10 pin, 9 pin. Everything else strikes. That was pretty good. His second double. And now he cannot be shut out no matter what Andres Gomez does. Andres max score 227 with this strike here. Jason Belmonte's max score 237. That ball there could have knocked down 30 pins as it went through the pins like a Mack truck going through a little, little snowmen, little snowmen pins. Tiny little snowmen. Yeah. This is the one, this is the one you need to catch. It's nice roll it. It's a nice roll. Gomez just burned a re-rack. It's nice. Wonderful audio picking up his thoughts. Gomez in the ninth. Wow. Unreal. A little tighter line and it looked like it was gonna face up and it just Leaves it. Watch the six pin. Second to the right, go around the ten. Ten pin. One, two, three, four of those for Andres Gomez this game. Look out. Watch out. Watch out. Oh, boy. Just gift wrapped title number 20 to Jason Belmonte. That's what happens when you, all your focus is on how to get your ball to strike and you lose just enough or you, don't, you, you pay just that little attention to shooting the 10 pin and you end up missing it. And that's what happens. That's what happens with bad pin carry. But bad pin carry is the most frustrating thing. Andres Gomez hasn't missed the pocket since the third frame. Or since the second frame rather and Del Monte well, he just needs to keep it on the lane and stay behind the foul line. I uh, just need to be a little bit more deeper, a little bit deeper. Uh. It's good to have Andres Gomez back, though. Is it such a class act? Yes, he is. You know, you, you just want him representing you and things you believe in. And why not, yeah. Finish with that 10 pin staring at you. Yeah. So he's in the books with the 194. Jason Belmonte. Find some pins and celebrate win number 20. Chapman just barely, right, and like all great champions, he took advantage of it. 20th career title, second this season. We now have three multiple winners on the PBA Tour as he joins Dick Allen and Norm Duke. And guess what? He's not done. He's your number one seed heading into tomorrow. In the Thank Scorpion you, Storm, match Bill, Bob, Also your Dave number one Sims. seed Thursday Thank night. Thank you so much.
at the PBA World Championship, the third major of this PBA season. We mentioned at the outset, he's having one of those seasons Aria, that can go. leave a legacy. Sylvie, Kimberly, mom, dad, ben, one of those seasons that James, people are going to be Miller, talking about for Samson. generations. Do you remember 2019 when Jason Belmonte stepped up yeah. and did A, B, C, and D and became guys. one of the best ever? Yeah. He's doing it right in front of our eyes, Randy. Right in front of our eyes. Amazing guy. He, he is the reason oh why it's, it's easy to lose oh track goodness. of just how hard it is thank to you, win Dexter, out on this boss. tour. Thank you, X-Bowling. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Detroit. Thank you, Detroit. Detroit Rock City sees Belmo lift hardware thank again. You, 42 pin win thank you, Tom thank you. over Andres Gomez. Kimberly with our winner. All right, Jason, you almost didn't make it out of the semifinals. Strikes were hard to come by, and um, you guys left a few 10 pins up there. What was happening with these lanes? <sighs> yeah, um, yeah that, was, that was a fortunate match. Um, listen, this Arena Bay, it's, it's so different to the main bay that the way the ball goes through the pins is crazy. And as you can see, you have to hit the 1-3 perfectly. Otherwise, you leave something. You're picking your spare ball up. So... Unfortunately for Andres tonight, he left a few more than I did. Um, but I really enjoy playing my good friends, and, and Andres is one of them. And hopefully we'll go get a drink afterwards, and I'll shout him dinner. Well, tonight you hit a milestone, 20 PBA Tour titles. What is that like? 20. Um, that's, that's a crazy big number. I never thought I'd get to 20. Well, I mean, now that I'm here, I'm extremely happy. And I'm going to celebrate tonight and then get ready for the uh, next tournament tomorrow. So I won't be celebrating too much. All right, well, I'm going to put you on the spot. Are you going to make Scorpion for tomorrow or what? Absolutely, yeah. I'll win that one and then I'll win the World Championship. You've got to believe it, right? All right, you heard it right here. Congratulations to Jason Belmonte on his 20th PBA Tour title. And we could see number 21 tomorrow night. And we could see number 22 Thursday night. So tomorrow night, oh it's the Scorpion Championship. Jason Belmonte could very well be on that show as well. Our coverage begins at 8 Eastern right here on FS1. It's also streaming on the Fox Sports app. Jason Belmonte, your two seed, had to survive a wicked battle with A.J. Chapman. Took it by just three pins. And then in the title match, once again, Belmo does what Belmo so often does. Locked and loaded in Detroit, Rock City. He throws a 236, title number two in 2019, and title number 20 in his illustrious career. Another win for number one.